uh, Salem game, I, I thought Lily Thompson come in off the bench and give you a little spark, especially there late in the game. Um, you know, Lily, an athlete. I mean, she she can uh, she can play with the best of them, but uh, at times maybe maybe gets a little too aggressive, and and that yeah. causes her problems sometimes. But I thought in that game she done a really good job, and and that leads me to my point. I just feel like at different times there have been different lady senators step up to the plate. Yeah, they've all had their shots. That's what every game Kristen nominates a girl as player of the game on max preps and. After our game on Monday, we're like, who do we give it to? They all played they all so played well. well, but Shelby definitely stood out. Um, but every game we've had that challenge of who deserves this game because they're all – here's a good few points from Meredith, a good few steals from right. Jayla. Like, it's just everyone's chipping in to make that final game the win that we want. Yeah, and I think that's what it takes to uh, to, to have a successful team. You, you can't just rely on – if it's the same player every night, then that makes it easier for the defense as yeah. well, for the other team. And these teams in today's world with all the video and things that we have, you know, the scouting is uh, is just pretty uh, pretty intense. And I'm sure you guys spend a lot of time doing that as well, watching film on the teams that you got uh, coming up on the schedule. But, uh, you know, point is you can't just rely on one, one player. It takes a, a full team effort and not just your starting five, but also those girls coming yeah. off the bench. I mean, we're playing ten girls every night, and right. every ten girl is bringing something to the game no matter what it is. And we put them in, hey, we need you on this right. girl on defense, shut her down and they're willing to respond and do it well. Right. You got a, a, a game coming up tomorrow night down at Eastern, so not that far. Hopefully uh, have a good crowd down there. I'm going to try to get down there myself and watch that one. But uh, the Lady Musketeers struggling a little bit, uh, which has not been the case for them in the last several years. I mean, they've they've made some runs. We see them, you know, make a state title run a few years back. And, um, you know, they've had some teams that were really good, I think, um, you know, it may just be one of those things where they're they're young and trying to build. And, uh, you know, you take on the Lady Musketeers tomorrow night. I think uh, earlier when I was looking at their record, I think they've just won one game to this point, um, which, yes, is the case. They're one and eight. But, you know, as well as I do, the records, you can't really look at those kind of things, especially against a county rival, a county opponent. Um, seems like those games just pull out the best in, in all the kids. That's what, when we played Mitchell um, a few weeks, or last week, I guess it was, Yeah. our girls win in the game. They're like, this team, uh, we should win this game fairly easy right. based off the record of the past. And Mitchell came out, and they gave us a good run for our money. And it proved to the girls, I keep telling them, stop playing to the level of the girls right. you're playing. Play your game. Play like you're playing against a Lanesville or a Borden every single game. Give it everything they've got. And with our team being fairly young, I feel like that's something, too, that's going to come down the road. Um, right. When we, like tomorrow with our Eastern game, we don't try to game plan a whole lot. We'll bring up a couple key points. But if we focus the whole practice on our girls, it's – it's girls. Right. They're, um, they'll get <laughs> nervous, and sure. we just want them to play their game, and right. the best team will come out. I think that's a great point, too, as well. And the kids, too, talking about the social media and so much stuff that's out there, the kids look at that stuff, too. Yeah. You know they do. And, you know, just like tomorrow night, you know, they're probably looking at that, seeing Eastern's record and thinking, well, maybe, you know, maybe we can take a play or two off here or there. But, uh to your point, that is something that you got to get out of their head yes. because when you do that, those are the games that are really dangerous for you because you know that uh, anything can happen on any given night. And, you know, these teams, they have nothing to lose. Nobody expects them to win the game. So yep. when you're the favorite, you kind of got that X on your back that you're going to have to go out there and perform if you want to get a win. Yes, for sure. Um, it's just something that we've been hitting our girls hard with. Like, you've got to stop looking at records. Watch your film. Understand. Play your game and play what you believe is going to shut them down and pull out a win for our team. Right, absolutely. And, and that game tomorrow night down at Eastern, uh, 6 o'clock, I believe, for the JV. Yeah, but there's only three quarters JV tomorrow Okay, night. so they don't have a big uh, yep. numbers uh, and probably have a lot of younger girls that are playing 
both JV and varsity. And we've yes. seen that a lot here in the last uh, couple years, it seems like, more so, um, you know, than what it was in the past. It seems like there's so many teams that don't have a lot of – uh, players in one particular class, and and the lady senators are kind of in the same boat. Well, mm -hmm. you got one one senior in uh, Shelby, have two, seniors, two seniors, Shelby and Eva. Eva, yeah. Um, but I mean, last year we played two quarters JV every game because right. we didn't have enough didn't girls. Have enough. It's just, it's a. What do you what do you attribute that to? I know we got one of our younger teams. I think our middle school girls are down here uh, practicing right now, the seventh and eighth grade. But it looks like they've got a pretty good amount of numbers. So, um, you know, I know as a coach, sometimes you, uh, you know, when when your numbers are down, you kind of got to roam the halls a little bit and pull some kids that yeah. might not ordinarily want to come out for basketball. I know the boys teams kind of went through that a little bit because. They've had some kids that were injured from fall sports, and, you know, it's kind of hurt their numbers. I know the JV uh, a couple nights there ended up uh, finishing the game with just four players on the floor because they had one foul out. So, um, you know, the numbers is a big thing, even though basketball is a little different than some of your other team sports. Uh, but, you know, when those numbers are short, it, it does kind of hurt things a little bit when you have to pull those kids up to play varsity plus. The difference between JV and varsity is a pretty good difference. Yes, for sure. <laughs> That's what when I I pulled two of our girls yesterday that played JV and varsity, and I talked to him. I'm like, look, you need to focus on your JV game, play the game that right. you would in a varsity game. Which I feel like it's back to playing down to the level that you're playing to. Um, you should be standing out in the JV games when you're playing both. It's just so hard for those girls to play a weaker team to go up to right. the Right, yeah. I'm sure that's probably yeah. true, and that would be hard for them to adapt to that. So three quarters of JV tomorrow night, and then the varsity contest. And then looking ahead on your schedule here, got some big games coming up. I know next Tuesday night at Orleans. Uh, Orleans with a pretty good uh, team, I believe, this year. Uh, from what I was seeing earlier, they're 7-1 and one on the year to this point. They're um, a strong team for sure. Honestly, this summer I s went to their team camp with oh, Orleans. I have some friends there, and gotcha. she's like, you want to go with me? So I've watched them quite a bit, and they're a good team. They're going to give us a run. Um, our girls just have to be ready and I'm hopefully ready. We pull Answer out a win. Answer the bell a yes. little bit. <laughs> yeah. So a big game tomorrow night, and then that game with Orleans. And to this point in the season, it's hard to believe. Uh, you know, we're nine games in, ten tomorrow night. So – basically about halfway through almost of the regular season. And then, you know, I don't like to talk about things down the road, but, you know, the sectional uh, coming up, that sectional is here. And, man, what a bad, uh, uh, you know, thing for the Lady Centers. We're in a tough sectional, probably the toughest 1A sectional uh, in Indiana High School ladies basketball right now yeah for sure we have number one and two ranking right now in our sectional yeah um but we just keep telling our play. girls you play your game and we'll see the outcome and keep working your tail end off in practice and you'll get that outcome that you want right i know coach messmore and i talked about that a little bit in our opening night of senator sports talking you know it's it's one of those things where you can't you can't change that it is what it is the the alignment comes and you're going to play the teams that are closest to your area but the one good thing for for the lady senators this year is that we'll be here at home and it's great to be playing here uh in the tower gymnasium here on the ron smith court uh with that sectional coming up uh, down the road but uh, uh as you mentioned i think one and two in that uh in that 1A uh, ranking right now. And I think they play tomorrow night yep. at Borden. So Lanesville and Borden playing each other. So that'll be interesting to see how that one comes out. But as you mentioned, I think it's a great point. You just got to play your game and, and not worry so much about what they do as much as about what your team's doing. That's what I keep telling the girls. I'm like, you have no control over what their team is doing, right. but you have every bit of control over how we play, how you play as an individual, and how you play as a team, and that's what you have to control. Yeah, and there again, it's one of those things where, you know, sometimes that's hard to get through, um, you know, 13, 14, 15-year-old kids' heads, especially the younger ones. Maybe the older ones have seen a little bit of that, but uh, the younger ones on the team, uh, freshmen, sophomores, and, and even some of your juniors that haven't played a whole lot of varsity basketball, 
that's a hard thing to, to focus on. You know, they want to worry about what the other teams are bringing to the floor, but uh, got to take care of your own business. Control the controllables is what an old football coach of mine used to say. He said, yeah. we can't control what they do, but we can control what we're doing. That's what I keep telling our girls. They're watching a lot of film, which is a good thing. But I'm like, watch our games too. Watch yes. yourself. Pick out, nitpick yourself, and pick out the things that you do wrong, and that's, that's what you point. need to work on. Yeah, that's a great point. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. Is there anything else that you want to talk about while we're here? I mean, this I is your I'm opportunity. <laughs> what about Mason? Can we talk about Mason? A well, little he bit? actually called me a minute ago, <laughs> and he Did goes, he? "You need <laughs> to let him know that me and Steve will be coming on one day." Um, here soon and I'm like I'm sure that's what they everyone <laughs> wants to hear well you know that wouldn't be a problem you know I've, I've told people over the years I matter of fact Ryan Bat, I talked to him quite a bit because he does the lady senator games and you know we we've talked a lot and uh, you know he he talked to me early on about calling games when your kids on the floor and and that is tough because you know there are times when you want to say something and you kind of have to bite your tongue so my advice to Mason is if he ever wants to do this down the road, got to learn to bite your tongue. Oh, he's <laughs> not very good at he that one. Well, and, y you know, you wouldn't think I would be either. And I've told people over the years that's one reason why I do this because I'm not a good fan in the stands. Oh, yeah, I'm that I'm guy either. that's yelling at every call, <laughs> yelling at everything. And at least if I'm pinned up here, I try to bite my tongue a little bit. But That's what last Friday <laughs> at the boys game, me and Mason went to it, and he was like, you've got to quit yelling at the refs. And then the next five minutes, he's going <laughs> he's at him. And I'm like, what's the difference? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. But, yeah, it is so hard. And, you know, you get caught up in the games. I, I love to watch uh, basketball, I think. Out of all the sports, I, as far as watching the game, I think I'm more into watching that than I am the others. But it just uh, – I like high school basketball. It's pure basketball. You know, you don't see all the the things that maybe you see at the college level and definitely not in, at the professional level. But, uh, and, you know, it, it's about as pure basketball as you're going to find. And, and especially almost really I like the ladies uh, watching the girls play too because – there is a lot more uh, purity to the game. You know, you got to be able to handle the ball. And I remember when I was in school, you might have one or two girls that could really handle the basketball. But the ladies' game has progressed so much in the last 20 years that it's it's unbelievable how good some of these girls are. Yeah, it's definitely changed a lot. Yes, it definitely has. And you know that as a former player. But Thank you for coming in and filling in tonight. I know you'd rather be shopping with the girls. <laughs> we'll tell the girls if they're listening, make sure that you get Coach Russell something really nice this year for Christmas. <laughs> She's been a good girl. Mason, if you're listening, that goes for you too. I expect nothing but the finest uh, for <laughs> Coach Russell. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for joining us, and good luck tomorrow night. Thank you. All right. Well, the lady senators will be taking on Eastern Musketeers, the lady Musketeers. Down at Eastern tomorrow night. And, uh, you know, if you're not uh, doing anything, come out and watch these girls play. I mean, they put a lot of time into the game and uh, and really do a nice job uh, with uh, with what they've done here. And you can show it. It's showing in their record right now, 7-2 and two on the year for the Lady Senators. And we wish uh, Coach Messmore and Coach Russell and the rest of uh, the staff there good luck tomorrow night against Eastern. And, and also further down the road, and we'll talk more about those games coming up later on uh, on our Senator Sports Talk. And, you know, this is the first year we've done the Senator Sports Talk. Our first, uh, we're about three shows in now. Uh, I've done the opener, and then uh, the professor, Craig Eckers, uh, uh, did it last uh, week. And then we're going to try to keep this thing going a little bit. Hopefully down the road we can build on it more and more as we go on. But, uh you know, the main reason is we want to get this out. We want to talk to our coaches and, and uh, you know, talk uh, more about their teams and how much time and effort these kids put into the work and also our coaches. And we just appreciate all of those that are involved in the programs here at West Washington as, uh, as we move further into the basketball season. As we mentioned, the ladies, uh, about halfway through their season, they'll play game number 10 tomorrow night. Um, down at Eastern, so their uh, their season is quickly winding down. It just goes so fast once it gets started. The boys, 
uh, you know, just underway as uh, we move on in and uh, and get rolling here with our uh, with our boys uh, coaches here tonight. And uh, coach, welcome back to the uh, show. I haven't talked to you really since the Salem game, so good to have you back on the air. But uh, uh, great job for your team so far. I mean, uh, had a big win there against Salem. Then we played Eastern in that double overtime game. I had to miss that when I had to had a prior commitment, but uh, I know that game was a heartbreaker for, for you and, and the boys, but, uh, you know, it sounded like it was a well of a basketball game. You know, I, I, I felt like we did a lot of things right. Yes, we came up on the short end, but we, again, even against Salem, we got good shots early. We're not taking a ton of bad shots. We're taking some questionable shots, but uh, pleased with our effort, pleased with uh, where we're going. I think people are buying into what we're trying to do. Uh, I don't know if Craig's listening or not, but he kind of <laughs> jinxed us on the free throw thing the other day. <coughs> I warned yeah. him about that one. Yeah, well. That's powerful that's stuff coming from you guys. You well, know? yeah, we try not. You know, and <laughs> you know what's weird about that? You say that, but there's been games, you know, like, like right in the middle of the game, and you'd have a kid that was really hot, you know, whether it be from the floor or the free throw line, and, and I'll even say it, you know, hey, he's – He's perfect at the free throw line tonight, and then I think, oh gosh, I probably just jinxed him. And sure enough, they'll clang one off the back of the, the iron, and you're thinking to yourself, why did I say that? <laughs> but it never seems to fail that that <laughs> happens. Yeah, that kind of happened the other night. If we make some free throws here or there, we we got to the line. We were doing things like I said, we were getting the ball in the to right get places, there. running right. running the right sets. We had the ball in the right guy's hands, and you know, we. We'd like to have one of those go in. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes it just seems like it doesn't matter. Uh, they just don't fall. You know, you'll see kids, the form looks good, the shot looks good, but it just it just doesn't go down, and that's always so tough for for kids to uh, to learn. But, you know, I think it also I think, uh, you know, kids that are good free throw shooters spend a lot of time shooting free throws. They sure do. So, you know, that's that's always been the thing, and, you know, it's like uh, I've heard coaches say in the past. You know, you you don't have to be the uh, you don't have to be the biggest scorer, but you can always do the little things right. And sometimes those little things can sure make a difference in the outcome of the ball game. Well, we we try and pay attention to the details, and you know, we want to catch the ball in the right spot. We want to be in the right spot at the right time, and yeah, <laughs> those little <laughs> things make all the difference in the world. They sure do, and and it it, it can really hold true in tight games like you mentioned yeah. at the free throw line yep. not getting those shots to fall you know they can really hurt you you go to two overtimes but sound like the kids hung in there and you know played all the way to the end and just come up there a little bit short yep yep that's just uh, part of the game somebody had to win uh someone's got to lose right they yeah it, it, that's 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 no doubt true fact so you're one and one on the year heading into uh Starting to get into the meat of the schedule a little bit. Things pick up a little bit from here forward. Seems like you have a lot of, um, you know, uh, two week games. You, you you'll have, you'll have uh, two games every week pretty much from here on out. It yeah. seems like at least two. Some weeks maybe even three. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you got a tough one tomorrow night. Got to go on the road or not tomorrow night, but Friday night. Go over to Paoli to take on the Rams. Uh, Paoli has had some uh, really good basketball teams here the last few years, and and I think they've got a pretty good uh, pretty good team there this year. Well, there's no doubt about it. That's a that's a very good team. Coach Cole's doing a great job there. They good tradition, good everything. Hard place to go and win. It is. Um, they got good shooters. They got kids that know their roles. Again, that's that's coaching. Um, they play hard. They play really hard. Yeah. They're physical. Uh, we got we got a lot of work to do. We got a we got a lot of work. Just uh, fact of the matter, that it's a conference game. Yeah. Uh, yep. We want to get all those that we can, and uh, we're going to go in there and fight, and you know try and come out on top. But uh, we we just got to continue to grow and learn. Treat this like a sectional championship game. Good environment for our, for us. Um, not that Eastern or or here against Salem. Right. Right. Here, but just you know you keep. Keep getting in those situations. The more more times that happens, the more familiar you are um, at tournament time, and that, that's where we really really want to shine in. Yeah, absolutely. And as you mentioned, Paoli always is. It's a tough place to play. Big gym. Uh, you know, uh, it kind of at times if there's not much of a crowd, it seems like you're in a no man's land over there. It's just a, such a huge place. And I know 
back way back when uh, when I was in school the sectionals were always there you know that was before they went to class basketball so um, you know there were a lot of sectionals played in that gym there at Paoli so kind of a tough place to play you know looking at at the Rams speaking about them they're 2-0 and on the year they got wins over Henryville and uh, Lanesville uh, two pretty convincing wins for Paoli yeah. but two teams also that have struggled a little bit Henryville, you know, I felt like uh, last year had a pretty pretty good squad over there. I think they graduated some kids from that team. Uh, but, um, you know, Lanesville also uh, struggled a little bit uh, the last couple seasons. But, you know, uh, I know that's not something you really you can put a whole lot of stock in, but I'm sure you've watched some film on the Rams. And tell us what, what your team has to do to, uh, to compete in that basketball game coming up on Friday. Well, we got to find their shooters. Yeah. We, we think we know who they are. And we got to, uh, I think maybe the biggest thing I should have started with was rebound the basketball. It's huge every game, but yeah. especially against them, we can't give them you know, two and three shots. We got to limit them to, uh, to one shot. Our transition's got to be good. They, they seem to get some uh, forced uh, transition points. They turn, turn, you over, turn you over, and then they go score. They're looking to score. They're not looking to steal it and walk it up they're they're looking to go put points on the board and then get it back in their hands as quick as they can we got to handle their pressure but if we can rebound the basketball we can dictate pace a little bit better there um, again identify shooters and and the cold boy he he likes to drive more so than shoot he's a very capable shooter as well but we got to contain him keep him in front of us square him up keep him out of the lane he's great at drawing fouls especially at home he just he knows how to get into you and, and gets that call um Time and again, he shoots a ton of free throws. Right. We got to keep him off the line. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. They've not been tested yet. Uh, yeah. You know, they've won by 30 plus in both of their games. Yeah. Yeah, they and, have. Uh, that's for sure. I, I'd like to see them what they do in a tough, <laughs> close game. You know, <laughs> well, it's hopefully a that harder. hopefully that'll be the case on Friday night yeah. if we can uh, keep it close with them. And I feel like we can. I feel like uh, you know we're capable of doing that. You know. Uh, I know looking at, at the points that they put up, but as, as we mentioned, against a couple of opponents that may not be quite as good at scoring the basketball, but both games they've scored, uh, well, 64 the last time out against Lanesville, 72 against Henryville. So they like to, as you mentioned, get out and go. They want to run. They want to score. Um, how much of that are you going to try to slow them down? Are you looking at – you know, some zone or where you play man to man or just you just kinda call that as you go as as the game goes along or? Well, well not to give you the Bobby Knight here, but I don't <laughs> want to give away all my secrets. Right, I uh, get it, I get it. You know he, That was a trick so, question. Sometimes. I asked you my first trick <laughs> question of the year so far, so that was one right sometimes there. Sometimes Coach Knight didn't answer Don. Well did he that? didn't. He didn't. <laughs> or he would tell Don to shut the you know what up. Uh, uh and I hope we we don't <laughs> get to that. But boy Bobby he he sure wouldn't pull any punches. If you ask him a question he didn't want to answer, he, no. by gosh, he wasn't going to answer. <laughs> no, honestly, we, we do want to, you know, control the tempo a little right. bit. We, we, we're going we're gonna to mix it up. We're going to try and see what's working the best, and it depends on personnel. It always does. Um, someone gets in foul trouble, we'll try and adjust right. offense or defense. Whether they get in foul trouble or we do, it just changes the game and what you may play defensively So and what they may play defensively against us. Right, right. So a tough place to go. As far as I know we talked early in that first uh, Senator Sports talk about, you know, some of the kids that were injured and, and on the team. You know, where are you, where are you standing right now with that? Are you still – kind of banged up a little bit and a little short I'm sure on the bench but uh. we're very banged up we may have uh, one guy coming back uh, Ryan Shipman may be released by Friday right this weekend we may have a couple other guys uh, coming around Christmas time um, Brady uh, Rosenbaum could be released and then Cree Zink maybe okay. be the other one so could have three guys um, giving us a little bit of a shot in the arm by Christmas time but yeah it's still uh, we got some doctor visits and some releases and and we got to get in shape. Right. You know? Yeah. Then you got to get in basketball shape. So so, so we're uh, we're anxious to get our hands on everybody and and get to work. It'll help us in practice as much as it will in games. It's really hard to play the JV varsity game with with 12 kids. Oh yeah, I'm sure so. it probably is. And I know 
I know that Salem game, the, you know, the JV <laughs> game, they ended up with four on the floor because yeah. they had one foul out in the, the last uh, last few minutes of that game. They they were definitely out, outnumbered, but uh, and it didn't help that that game went into overtime, yeah. double overtime before right. it was over with. But, um, yeah, that's tough, you know, when you don't have – the numbers and you've got some injuries but uh, you know as far as the nucleus nobody else is hurt uh, just the ones that we were dealing with yeah. from the very beginning yeah <laughs> so nothing nothing new to report there everybody seems to be uh, you know we're in the season so everybody has a nagging something right oh yeah uh, but yeah. no nothing serious there well that's good that's good and then as we mentioned uh, when we first come on here with you uh, coach Cummings about the dual games and this weekend is one of those where you know then we we get done with Paoli on Friday night hopefully coming out of there with a big big win and then uh, nice. come back here to uh, Kermit Tower Gymnasium on Saturday night to take on uh, Trinity Lutheran so um, you know dual weekend and you know that's as you mentioned getting in shape uh, sometimes is is half the battle and you know whether you can keep your legs and those those Friday Saturday uh, deals are tough on the kids. Yeah, yeah, we, it's our first one. Um, you know, like I said, Paley's going to be physical. We know that, so we're going to have some bruises when we wake up Saturday morning, whether we win or lose. We're right, gonna be, you know, we're going to be, be beat a little, up a little bit. <laughs> so we're going to be sore. Um, we're going to get in the gym, you know, and work out. Go through a scouting report on Trinity Lutheran. Go over their personnel and and try and attack, you know, them as best we can Saturday, and hope that you know the guys are feeling good and then. Uh, their style of play is going to be very unique to what we've seen thus far. Right. To to this point in the season, I know we're just two games in, but, you know, how are you feeling about, you know, where you're at right now? I mean, with with the hand you're dealt, with having the shorter numbers due to some injuries from the fall sports and things, but, you know, how do you feel about your basketball team here two games in? I know, you know, you're, you're one and one and everybody looks at record, but – but very well could be 2-0 and on the year in a couple tight games. But uh, I think the kids have, have really, really played hard, and, uh, and hopefully that, that will continue. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people look at your wins and losses, and that's, that's how we're judged. You know, I'm maybe 2-0, right. and and we're getting worse. But that's not the case. We're 1-1. One and one. Right. We are getting better. We're talking better. We're moving better. We're understanding what what the coaches want, what what the players are doing and trying to do. Um, we're getting better at it. We uh, we expect different things, and you know, just the communication. We've been able to add a few more sets. Um, we're getting a better feel for when we're going to be where we need to be. We talked about timing tonight. You know, being in the correct spot when you're needed, when your partner needs you. That was our emphasis right here on the practice report All right. schedule. Um, but uh, I think we're getting better. I think we get a little bit better, you know, each and every day. The problem is so are the other schools we're playing. Well, that's um, a good but point. But we are, we are getting better. If, if we had a, you know, a graph, it's, it's trending upward. We've, we've had days where we've went back and we've had moments for sure. But um, I think it's, it's a positive thing right now. We're just getting a little bit better each and every day. Um, and I, th I think we're understanding what's expected of us as a player. And uh, just – I think we're getting better. That's my opinion. But, yeah, the wins and losses, I'd sure love to have two of them and everybody think I was a good coach. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You know, I, I watched that, and I don't know whether you watched any of it or not, but it, that, I was watching that IU game last night. I and, missed it. And the one thing that uh, I took from that, when they talked to Coach Woodson after the game, you know, he he mentioned the fact that just what you said, you know, it, it it's one of those deals where um, – it's rewarding whenever you start to see some of your uh, guys figure it out is kind of the way he put it. Um, and I think he had some, you know, maybe some bench players that he did, didn't feel like they were quite to where he wanted them to be. And it kind of come out a little bit uh, last night and, uh, you know, really helped their team out when you get that kind of uh, contribution from – from players off your bench, and uh, and I think that's huge in some of these games. And, and that's one of the most rewarding things about coaching when you see yeah. the growth and the development. For example, we we hadn't taken hardly, maybe we got in the way and took a charge along the way early on the first couple of weeks. We have not taken a charge. I don't think that we've got called in a game in the first two. Um, it's it's been something we've been talking about, working on. You know. Just being aware of it, being in the right spot. Right. We've taken three or four in the last couple of days, so I'm seeing that trend. That's a good thing. 
we're trying to take it now. Right. You know, so when you see guys trying to do what you're asking them to do, it's it's just a rewarding moment as a coach to see a see a young man trying to do what you're asking him to do and getting better at it. Right, absolutely. And you know, to this point, we've we've seen. I know in the Salem game, we you know we saw uh, uh, Kent and Chase kind of step up there at the end of the game and and make some drives and score some buckets that we really needed to have to get that win. And and I know that's something that uh, you know in years past, he, even as a radio announcer, I. I would tell Kenton sometimes, and, and, and I hope he didn't listen to me a whole lot because I'm no basketball coach, but I used to tell him, hey, dude, you got the, you, you got the guy out. You're the fastest guy on the court. You can blow past anybody and score. Take the ball to the hole, you know. <laughs> and, and maybe I was telling him stuff that uh, Coach Sullivan didn't want me to tell him. But, you know, you, you see those kind of things as you watch. And, and I think, to your point, uh, that's the part that's rewarding. When you work on those things in practice and then you get to see it in the game and it comes out, that is uh, really what you're looking for and what you're asking for out of these yeah. kids. That's how you get better. That's how you grow as yep. a person on or off the court, I think. I think it's just it's important to continue to develop um, as a person, as a player. And, Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's just nice when you have a small part and see that. Yeah, yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, I, I know the JV squad has been uh, down a little bit. Tell us, you know, they got that opening win. How did they do against Eastern's JV? They, they won. <laughs> did they? They won big. Did they? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, I, I, I never had heard how they come they, out. They played well. Uh, Colton Brown had 20 points in the first half. He really? Was, he was quartered. And, yeah, a little story on him since you missed it. Right. I think he missed his first shot and then maybe made his next six or seven in a row, seemed like. And then he missed a wide open layup. So that, <laughs> that was the only heat check I've ever seen from the layup. Yeah. And, and he missed it. But, yeah. yeah. So I'll make fun of him a little bit. Well, yeah, Colton's definitely capable. We saw that in the varsity game against Salem. We come in, hit a couple big threes. Yeah. And, you know, he, he's a kid that, uh, uh, you know, it's going to be uh, interesting to see what he can do here the next three or four years as yeah. a freshman. And, uh, you know, I just feel like, um, you know, from watching your team uh, that opening night, I, I feel like there's a lot of good pieces in that puzzle. And when they uh, – if if they all ever hit on all cylinders at the same time, they're capable of doing some great things here. Yeah, that's a good good description. The puzzle and the, the pieces and everybody yep. understanding their role, their part, where I fit, how we interlock or whatever you want right. to stick to that puzzle thing. But yeah, uh, we're trying to figure that out, and we got a solid foundation to work with, and some seniors that's that's been there, done that kind of sort of thing, and we're trying to build around them, and then getting other guys. Colton, for example, getting him shots here or there, getting holding in a situation where he right. can drive the ball and do some of the things that he's really, really good at. Very crafty kid. In, yes, uh, in he is. Open court, knows how to play. Um, some of what we do kind of restricts him a little bit, but when you just open him up and let him go, you'll see some really good things there. And uh, we just want to continue to build on that. We, we're going to have to have somebody step up beyond that and go to their bench. Um, right. You know, we're looking at maybe Hayden this week. Uh, coming in, giving us some minutes here or there, and it's, it's going to be limited to start with, but he's going to get a chance, get his feet wet, right. see what he can do in the varsity game, and uh, just continue to build that puzzle. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think that that is the key, and as you mentioned, just getting better as you go along. So two games in here, got a big game on Friday night at Paoli. Like to see a good crowd over there from Senator Nation, so get out and support the, uh, the boys uh, there on Friday night, and then back here at home come Saturday night and then uh, you know we'll we'll continue to talk uh, as we mentioned kind of gets busy from there on out then we go into the holiday tournament so you know it, it's going to be kind of a crazy thing and you know that holiday tournament you one good thing about playing uh, Salem and, and uh, Eastern early on is the fact that you've already seen them before you get to that tournament so you know that uh, kind of what to expect out of them but uh, those those tournament games are just uh, tremendous, and I've always loved that tournament, uh, you know, right there before Christmas break. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. be my first time yeah. involved with it, but uh, some good teams, some good basketball. Um, invite everybody to come and support your team and just want to see the gym full. I, yeah. hope, I hope we got more than anybody there, but 
Well, you know, it's always it, nice to see a full gym. Yeah, last year, you know, it was out here, and so it, you know, it was a pretty full gym. Of course, uh, all the teams, and I think there's a lot of people in town that don't ordinarily come because of the holidays. But yeah, it was it was good to see, and I'm sure that's what we'll see again this year. But before that, we got Paley on Friday, Trinity Lutheran here on Saturday. So come out and support uh, the uh, Senators boys basketball team with two big uh, games this weekend, and Coach Cummings. We appreciate you joining us here again tonight and taking the time out. I know you're busy right now with school and practice and everything that's going on, but uh, but we do appreciate uh, what you do for us here, and uh, good luck uh, moving forward, and we'll see you on Friday night. I'm glad to be here. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. And that's all the time we've got here tonight for our Senator Sports Talk. We'll be back here probably next week we'll see how things go but uh, we've kind of been just playing that uh, by ear as we move along throughout the season but I'm sure uh, we'll be talking to Coach Cummings again and then also Coach Messmore, Coach Russell as we move forward uh, into the uh, season here with our Senator Sports Talk. At some point in time we will probably also try to uh, to get uh, the wrestling in here. Coach Tankersley, we want to get talking to him. I think they opened up uh, with their uh, regular season uh, starting this evening. So hopefully we'll get the wrestling uh, Coach Tankersley in here at some point to talk a little bit about that. And, you know, as we build on this program, we've talked about different things we want to do. At some point in time, we may even turn this into a call-in show. Uh, we've talked about that. So... Just stay tuned with us. We're uh, we're kind of getting our feet wet, so to speak, uh, with this, and uh, we just want to be able to to uh, talk a little bit about these kids and how hard they work here in the season. So um, that's all the time we have tonight. So for the Professor Craig Akers, this is Bubba Abbott. We say God bless you, and we'll send it back over to the studio. Gates, Carnegie, Rockefeller. I'm not generous caring, rich in spirit, I am. You don't have to be a person of great wealth to make an impact. When caring individuals give through a flexible, creative, capable organization known as a community foundation, our philanthropic potential is unlimited. As your local community foundation, we provide you the opportunity to permanently support the causes you care about both near and far. We do this by protecting and administering permanent funds through thoughtful grant making to improve the quality of life in the community we serve. Simply put, donors who give through a community foundation build sustainable, permanent funds called endowments through contributions big and small to support organizations they care about most, forever. Through the generosity of our many donors and the responsible, informed investment of permanent funds, we will increase our grant-making ability for the benefit of our community for generations to come. All we need is you. What causes are you passionate about? What organization matters most to you? We can help you ensure your charitable interests are supported forever. Donors can give to an existing endowment or establish their own. Some choose to give now, while others make their gift later through their will or estate plan. To learn what your options are, talk to your community foundation we're here to help you reach your philanthropic goals. If you love our community, let's leave our little corner of the world a bit better than we found it. Not just today, but for future generations too. The Washington County Community Foundation has been making our home a terrific place to live, work, and play since 1993 through the generosity of donors just like you. Why? Well, just like you, we also really love our community.